Before we get started today, this was supposed to be our big announcement of our first live show in a year. It's on the 13th of November in London. But we released the tickets early to our club members and um, they've pretty much sold out. Now, it is still possible to join the waiting list. The link is in the episode notes where you can search The Rest is History live. So as I said, this was going to be our only live show in 2022. So um, we're very sorry if you've missed out. Um, and if you don't want to miss out in the future, you can always join the club at restishistorypod.com, restishistorypod.com. Um, but we're going to try and work out if there's something else we can do. We're going to see if we can work out some other arrangements or maybe one extra show or we'll, we'll see like when that. we come. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'll keep you posted on that. And in the meantime, if, even if you don't want to join the Rest is History Club, just keep listening. Hello and welcome to the Rest is History's Love Island. The couples are on their way to the island, bronzed, buffed, stripped, and ready. Yes, it is that time of the year again. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, don't ask me because this is not my idea. It's the <laughs> idea of my co-presenter, Tom Holland, who reveals himself to be an unexpected reality TV show enthusiast. So, Tom, what is Love Island and why are we doing it? I don't really know because I've never watched it. Oh, no. But, but we, we are... A podcast, are we not, that responds to great public events. So we've responded to political <laughs> events, to sporting events, uh, to all kinds of occasions. Yeah. And there is no question that here in Britain, Love Island um, is a big event. We are obviously Huge. both kind of 273, so it yeah. completely passes us by. However, I have two daughters. And you may remember that last year, my younger daughter, Eliza, persuaded us to do uh, a, a version of Love Island on our episode on Henry VIII's Six, Six wives. wives. One by Anne Boleyn. Yeah, one by Anne Boleyn, who absolutely iconic contestant. Um, and so this time around, I thought it would be good. We'll do a whole episode themed around Love Island, but because I've never watched it and I don't really know how it works. Tom, your research has let you down completely. <laughs> no, but I, I, I have an elder daughter who is on hand and is at the end of this microphone. So a great, great thrill to welcome to the podcast, my elder daughter, Katie. Welcome to the rest of this history. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a childhood dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, Katie, just for the benefit of the many British listeners and the many overseas listeners who may have no idea what Love Island is, can you just give us a very, very brief sketch about what it, what it involves? Of course. Um, so it's been going on now, I believe, for six seasons. Um, and essentially... Um, Love Island is where you get a group of very good looking people um, onto an island in Mallorca and they're completely cut off from the outside world. So they have a phone, but they can only talk to the other islanders on the phone. Um, they have no idea what people are saying on Twitter, which is kind of part of the fun is looking at all the memes that come out um, of the show. Um, and essentially the aim of the show is to win so you get um, 50 grand at the end of it and you can decide whether you are going to um, split that money with your partner or you're going to keep it. So the aim of the game is to show, are you really in it for love or are you doing it? Are you selfish, become, egocentric <laughs> grasper? Yeah, to become an influencer and, and sell, yeah, and like sell expensive uh, toothpaste on Instagram. But, but how does the, so the contest, so what are they doing? Are they kissing? What are they? Because my son s says some of his, some of the girls at school, some of the 10 year old girls have seen it, but they call it the love kiss show. <laughs> um, so, so presumably there must be some love kiss as well as islanding going yeah, on. Yeah. So, yeah, good question. Um, so, I think, <laughs> so, every single week there's a thing called the recoupling. Um, so, it'll either be the boys that choose the girl that they want to couple up with or the girls choose. Um, and the moral of the show is if you're single, you get dumped from the island. <laughs> right. OK, right. so there's so there's real jeopardy. So basically, they ha people have to pair up. So that's the, that's yeah, the key. You have to you have to try and, and kiss anyone who. who OK, you. OK. Just so, one I, quick question. Can I just intervene? The coupling up, as you call it. Yeah. I mean, they're not I mean, to, to ask a very boring, well, not a boring, a very exciting logistical question. <laughs> they're not kind of physically coupling on TV in front of the cameras, are they or are they? Um, they did in, okay, so they did in 
recent series when it was the less best. famous. But right. I think now the stakes are higher. So that also adds another layer of complexity. It's like, are people really in it for love anymore? Okay. okay. So we are going to send five hunks and five babes, um, not to Mallorca, but to Dominic Sandbrook's Fantasy Island. Pleasure Island, Tom. Sorry, Dominic Sandbrook's Pleasure Island. <laughs> for those people who don't know, that was the name that the BBC wanted to give a TV documentary that I, that I made. <laughs> um, just to be clear as well about one other thing. I'm so excited about this episode that I've lost my voice. So <laughs> that adds another level of complexity to the discussion. So we, we are going to send uh, five historical hunks and five historical babes to, um, to Dominic Zambrook's Fantasy Island. Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island. <laughs> um, and they will then have to, to couple up. But Katie, we asked you to, to nominate uh, 10 archetypes and you sourced all your friends, didn't you? And so this is a yeah. kind of a group your group conclusion as to the, as to the um the 10 archetypes of of the contestants on love island so could you just give them to us yeah of course um and i'm really sorry in advance if i've missed any but i did ask my friends just in case um okay so i've put them into two groups so men and women but they could apply to either gender but i think dom and tom you've just put them according to the genders i gave you so okay so men so for the first one, I said, player, very good looking, keeps changing his mind about who he wants to be with. The second one is the kind of sweet shit one. <laughs> he doesn't get anywhere and usually has quite a wholesome job. So the classic archetype of this is Dr. Alex in season four. He was a of doctor. Of course, Dr. Alex, that's the name. <laughs> of course. Of yeah. <laughs> um, number three is the traitor. He's very similar to the player, but pretends he's not. Um and pretends he's more into his partner than he is. And then at Castle and Moor, which usually happens in the fourth week, they get sent to another house where they have the opportunity to meet loads of more people. And they potentially, they pretty much always come back with a new girl after they come back to the main villa. Um, the number four is the producer's favourite. Uh, so usually pairs up with someone on the first day, stays with them and wins the competition. Always very likeable and unproblematic. And then... Yeah, my dad loved this one. The funny one, a top lad, loves the lads, leader of the lads. So that's the the five men. Then the, for the women, I've done number one, the bombshell who turns up and causes havoc. Um, so she steals someone else's man and doesn't care. Um, the stupid but lovable one, the justifiably angry, jilted one, who will call her ex for a chat and tell him off in front of everyone. Um Another producer's favourite, he'll pair up with the other producer's favourite, um, stay with them and win the competition. And then the gossip, who lives for the drama and will ruminate on whether people actually like each other or are they in it for the fame. Okay. So those are, those are the archetypes that I gave. Thank I you, hope Danny. they're faithful to the show. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, Dominic, we've divided them up, haven't we? We have indeed. So we've each got five that we're putting into the house. So um, shall I go first? Go for it. Mike, yeah. So, so I, I've chosen uh, the, the first uh, male um, archetype, the player who's very good looking, keeps changing his mind about who he wants to be with. And the historical hottie that I am sending in is George Gordon, Lord Byron, uh, brilliant poet, uh, notorious lover. Um, yeah. And to say that he, I, I mean, he was incredibly good looking. He had the one, the one thing he was very self-conscious about, he had a club foot. And so he didn't, he didn't actually like to kind of strip off. That's a problem on the Love Island, Tom. So that, is, that, that is an issue. However, uh, he was a superb swimmer. He loved right. swimming because obviously then he, could, he was as mobile uh, as he was tended to be immobile when walking. So um, presumably there's a, there's a swimming pool in this villa. So he would he'd be very, very proficient in the swimming pool. Yeah, but what's he going to wear? Like a wetsuit? I mean, he's got to strip off. Uh, well, he'd, he'd have to wear he'd, I mean, I think they're all wearing tight speedos, aren't they? Katie, is that right? They all wear tight speedos. And right. Byron, yeah. um, Byron swam the Hellespont, so I think he'd have no problem just spending the whole time in the swimming pool. Yeah, there is also a swimming pool to show off. Great, great. So, so great. Byron, Byron would be he good there. Well. He's the kind of guy who cheated on his wife with his half-sister. That's, yeah. that's the very, measure of the man. That's very David Lloyd George. I mean, he just had a, a, a sequence of explosively notorious affairs, perhaps the most notorious one, uh, Lady Caroline Lamb. Um, wife of future Prime Minister Lord Melbourne, 
um, who was so obsessed with him that she she sent him uh, clippings of her pubic hair in a letter. She um, when he when he dumped her, she uh, faked a suicide at the Duke of Wellington's ball. Uh, she got uh, all her servants to dress up in white wispy dresses and to dance around a bonfire and then she chucked all his letters in um and byron by so, so so byron would be great i mean i get i get i guess the kind of the dialogue what they talk how they communicate with each other is very important on love island so byron was great byron's response to this um lady caroline lamb crept into byron's house uh, and found one of his um one of his books and wrote in the fly life remember me and Byron replied, remember thee, remember thee, till Lethe quench life's burning stream. Remorse and shame shall cling to thee and haunt thee like a feverish dream. Remember thee, I doubt it not. Thy husband too shall think of thee. By neither shalt thou be forgot. Thou false to him, thou fiend to me. So that's the kind of banter that that Byron would be bringing <laughs> to... to uh, Tom, in very Byronic form, you're talking too much about Byron. We've got loads more to go through. So excellent choice. Uh, and also a fantastic description of him from his personal physician, Lord Polidori, who just, they were they're going on holiday together. Uh, and uh, Polidori said of Byron that as soon as he reached his room, he fell like a thunderbolt upon the chambermaid. They do um, write each other uh, messages in tea towels when they ask Great. people to be their girlfriend. So they'll write it on the lawn. On the tea towel. say, I love you. <laughs> so maybe he can write his poem in the tea towels. All right, who's your next one, Tom? Well, are you not? I think it's your turn. You should get one. All right. One. So I had to choose. The, I was told to choose the sweet one, who doesn't get anywhere. Usually does a wholesome job, and I've chosen the former U.S. President Jimmy Carter. Who <laughs> good um, choice? So Jimmy Carter, Katie, one-term president, former peanut farmer from Georgia. Um, I think he's going to suffer, frankly, on a couple of things. One is he's a teetotaler, and I don't know if they're allowed alcohol on Love Island. But I think it doesn't doesn't speak of a sort of party animal spirit that he refused <laughs> to have alcohol served in the White House. But he had peanuts, didn't office. he? He was a peanut farmer. Well, he was a peanut farmer. I don't know whether peanuts will avail him much on Love Island. <laughs> Might um, be popular. He's, so he's married to Rosalyn, Jimmy Carter, and he's very uxorious. Uh, there's hey, absolutely no, no suggestion of hanky-panky. They've got a daughter called Amy. Um, but the the... The sort of slightly complicating factor for for Jimmy is that he's he's an evangelical Christian. He's born again. He's the first evangelical Christian sort of president in modern American history. But when he was running for the presidency in 1976, he gave an interview to Playboy, in which he, in very sort of evangelical style, he he sort of lambasted himself about being full of sin, and he said. Um, I don't think of myself as better than other people. I'm actually a seasoned and practiced adulterer uh, because oh. I've looked at, um, because although I haven't actually done it in reality, <laughs> I've, I've, I've looked on women with lust. I've, I often find myself looking on a, other women with lust and I know that this is terrible behavior. Um, <laughs> so I think for somebody like Jimmy Carter, who's quite buttoned up, never drank, spent a lot of time with peanuts going to Camp David and trying to do talks and um, trying to stop people use too much electricity, which is basically his thing, or too much petrol. I think the shock of Love Island, it would be very, very interesting. <laughs> how, how would, how would, he'd look quite good in his speedos, wouldn't he? Because he went for runs. He, yes, he, well, he went for a run and collapsed, he, Tom. Yes. Yeah. So he famously went for a run and collapsed. He also went boating and was attacked by a killer rabbit, a swamp <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> Um, so he's got an unfort. He's an accident prone. <laughs> he's kind of accident prone. Um, I'm just anxious about the committing lust in his heart because I think <laughs> yeah. that sets a bad precedent. And if he's coming out with that, first of all, if he's coming out with that stuff on the island, what are the girls going to think? And secondly, um, you know, is it all going to be too much for him? Is he going to suddenly abandon his faith and his? kind of long cherished principles and just go wild <laughs> or will he just sit in a corner and cry it's very hard yeah. to say yeah I'd, well i mean that's that's all the excitement isn't it yeah, it is well, it they is. have to do they have to do video confessions um well he'd be great at that yeah it's kind of like big brother i think you probably have an existential crisis in one of the, in one of the yeah Bless so, him. but how yeah. would how would how would that play with the uh with the fans katie um what do you mean like with the yeah jimmy i think they'd confess. love him you think yeah. they'd love him 
yeah. think so. I think the memes would start pretty much straight away. Yeah. But they'd be kind of in, in good nature. See, there's part of me that thinks that actually he he could get quite far in the competition. Well, we'll find out. Wait, we don't well, know. Yeah, yeah usually out. they they keep the the kind of the one who's not very good at getting the women in for quite a long time. All right. Well, he's got to hope then, hasn't he? Because he's a fan favorite. So, so that's Lord Byron and Jimmy Carter. Um, let, let's move on to the women. So, um, I've got the stupid but lovable one, um, and I this was actually quite difficult because there aren't many stupid but lovable people who who kind of make a name for themselves in history. They're either very clever or they're not very lovable. Um, but the person that I have nominated is um, Frances Stewart, who lived between 1647 and 1702. Um, she was born to royalist courtiers during the, the Civil War, the English Civil War. So they'd moved to Paris. Um, and she was born two years before the execution of Charles I. So she grew up outside England. Um, but when Charles II went back to England with the Restoration, she went and first of all, she she was a, a kind of lady in waiting to Charles II's mother and then to his wife, Catherine of Braganza. And she was stunningly beautiful. So she was known as La Belle Stuart. Uh, everyone at Charles II's court was obsessed with her. Samuel Pepys went on and on about how gorgeous she was. Duke of Buckingham fell head over heels in love with her. But the the person, the biggest person who fell in love with her was Charles II himself, who was desperate to make her his mistress. And Francis Stuart was so dumb that she turned him down. Um, oh, and she she was described by a, a French courtier uh, that it would be difficult to imagine less brain combined with more beauty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so, and she was so beautiful that she became the model for the first um, portrait of Britannia that appeared on kind of medals and coins issued in, in, in 1667, which was the same year that she ended up finally pairing up with someone who was actually uh, not a bad catch, the Duke of Richmond. So she became the Duchess of Richmond um, and, and then lived a very happy life. So um, she, she may have been dumb, but she, she was beautiful and happy. So I think that she'd be, I think she'd be very popular. Oh, excellent choice. She's going to go far. <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right. So I'll choose a woman. Um, I've, you, one of your categories, Katie, was the gossip. Mm. Um, in it for the drama and, and ruminates on whether women, people actually like each other in it for the money. So I've chosen another 1970s character. I've chosen Marcia Williams, Lady Falconder. So she was Harold Wilson's political secretary, but she was an immensely controversial figure in British life in the 70s. Um, so she's from quite a humble background. For, she's the daughter, I think, of a Northamptonshire builder. And um, she's she's not a, an immensely good looking woman, I think it's fair to say. So, uh, but she's very charismatic and very clever. And she's always plotting and scheming in Wilson's sort of back office. Um, she was married earlier and then divorced. She has two children secretly with the political editor of the Daily Mail, oh. um, which you might odd thing for a for a Labour insider to do. And and that, but later on, there's a lot of controversy about whether or not she was accepting secret donations from shady businessmen to pay for her children's school fees, which you might say is again mm -hmm. slightly interesting from um uh, the a, a Labour special advisor. Um. But basically, there was always this suspicion that hung around her about whether she was, A, pouring poison the whole time into Harold Wilson's ear and poisoning him against his ministers, and B, whether he, he whether the two of them were secretly having an affair. And the story, one of his um, aides said that, claimed that in, in one of their many blazing rows that they would have in Downing Street, rows that would basically put sort of Boris and Carrie's carry on to, to shame, Sometimes she would raise her handbag and she'd tap her handbag <laughs> and she'd point to it meaningfully and she'd say, I have things in here that will destroy you. Um, <laughs> I, one, one, call, one call to the Daily Mail and you'll be finished. That's what I do with Tom, actually, like with your dad. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's right. It is. Uh, the, uh, is, is, the that love, thing, is that Love Island behavior, Kate? But the other thing, this, that is this Love Island behavior? Wait for this. The other thing is apparently one, at one point, I think it's in, I'm not sure if it's in Downing Street or just before they get into Downing Street. They have a massive row. So that's Marcia Williams, Harold, and Mary, his wife. And Marcia rants at Mary. And she says, um, I have only one thing to say to you. I went to bed with your husband five times in 1955, <laughs> and, it was, and it was not satisfactory. <laughs> so, um, and then, of course, when Harold Wilson resigns, there are claims that basically she wrote his resignation honours list for him 
on lavender notepaper, the lavender list, as it was called, basically giving peerages to all her cronies in return for help with the school fees. So that's Marcia Williams. I think she'd be a combustible character on Love Island. I think the issue of the satisfactoriness or otherwise of the couplings would obviously, you know, play a part. Mm. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I don't see her as a fan favourite, but I think certainly the newspapers would enjoy her presence. Yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of think everyone would say whoever found her deserves a pay rise because she's such good TV. Yeah. Yeah, good. So, I get a pay yeah. rise. Brilliant. Okay, yeah. so okay, so um, I, I've got another woman next, um, and this is the bombshell who turns up and causes havoc, steals someone else's man, and doesn't care. Doesn't uh, care. So, uh, so Katie, this is um, this is a person who was born Eliza Gilbert, so same name mm. as your sister, uh, but she's um, much flightier than uh, than our Eliza. So she was uh, of Irish stock, uh, but spent her early childhood in India, then came back. Went to school in Scotland, in in the northeast of England. Uh, she used to run naked through the streets, uh, which caused some eyebrows to be raised. And this was a, sorry, this was so. This is at the beginning of the nineteenth century. So she's born in eighteen twenty one. So this is the Victorian period. So you can imagine that running naked through the streets in Victorian Scotland was not a common, not a common thing. Sixteen, age sixteen, she elopes with a soldier. So very kind of Pride and Prejudice. Uh, it goes back to India. Um, she has a massive bust up with her husband, leaves him um, in Calcutta, comes back to London and she has become a dancer. And not only has she become a dancer, but she pretends to be a Spanish dancer. And she has taken on the name of Lola Montez. So she performs as a dancer. She's not probably not just a dancer. And she gets recognised as having been Eliza Gilbert. And so she flees to the continent <laughs> where she, she has a spectacular career as a courtesan. So in Paris, she has an affair with uh, Alexandre Dumas, who, who writes The Three Musketeers, um, very, very shrewdly. And I think this is very Love Island behavior. She has an affair with a French guy who not only owns a newspaper, but is the dance correspondent. So can obviously write amazing reviews of Lola Montez, bigging so her is up. Is she in it for money? She's in it for she's in it for the money because she just burns through men like nobody's business. And having having kind of got off with this newspaper critic, she then gets her biggest catch, who is Ludwig the First of Bavaria, who basically allows her to run the country until there's a revolution in 1848, and and um, Lola Montez has to kind of go running off. So having been kicked out from Bavaria, she goes back to London where she marries again. This is a bigamous relationship. So you know, illegal. So she flees to America where she has further marriages, further affairs, people that she's had an affair with, get they all get, end up getting murdered or disappearing. She goes to Australia where she, um, she has a notorious dart, the spider dance, which kind of is a kind of can can. Uh, she horse whips people who uh, annoy her. <laughs> no. uh, and she's just, it's just generally, it's kind of chaos, drama, uh, She'd be an amazing, amazing contestant. She's uh, she's had a huge impact on literature, so she's probably the model for um, uh, Irene Adler in the Sherlock Holmes story, A Scandal in Bohemia, uh, and in the Flashman Ooh. series, uh, Flashman has an affair with her in Royal Flash. So um, she she would be a combustible, highly entertaining, highly glamorous um, a contender. She could do her spider dance. I think would be a great fan favorite. Yeah. Um, and she would just, I mean, she, I think she'd find it very hard to stay coupled with one person unless she could be absolutely certain that person was going to win, in which case she'd probably stick with him. Such a good choice. She really reminds me of my favorite all time Love Islander, Maura, <laughs> <laughs> which will be nothing to you. Okay. But, but she's the look, best person I've ever seen on TV. And she was also Irish. She surely and wasn't the first person you'd ever seen on TV. You must've seen people on TV before. <laughs> <laughs> but she's the best person I've ever seen on TV. Oh, the best person? I thought you said the first person. Oh, not the um, first. But she, I had yeah, a she terrible image inside then into the Holland household. You're banned from watching television <laughs> yeah. until Love until, Island. Until Love Island, until Love Island comes on. <laughs> Victorian dad gets it wrong. Yeah. But, but there's so, actually a dance competition. As, yeah, oh, well, well, competition. well, well so I've, she, I've, you know. I've got a dancer at my sleeve, Katie, but I'll, I'll hold her back for the time being. Because I think oh. she's a bit similar to Lola Montez, but also I want her to have the maximum possible impact. So I'll bring her in near the end. Oh. So just one more before the break. So uh, you wanted a traitor, didn't you? You wanted a male traitor, very similar to the player, but with the difference that he pretends to be more into his partner than he is, and then randomly pairs up somebody else. So when I saw the word traitor, I thought, I'm just going to go in quite big with this. I'm going to go with the traitor. 
So I've gone with Judas. <laughs> <laughs> So That's Judas. a massive choice. A so, massive choice. <laughs> so Judas enters the island. So what we know of Judas, I think there is some doubt about whether Judas is there for love or whether he's there for the money, or more specifically for the 30 pieces of silver. Um, so that, that that's, I mean, Judas has got form. I think it's fair to say that although some of the other Love Islanders may not have heard of each other, they'll all have, by and large, have heard of Judas. So he comes in with baggage. Yeah. As the man. He's already guilty of one absolutely colossal betrayal um as he yeah. comes into the into, but, into the island but the interesting thing about judas and what i think makes him a wild card in this competition i mean he's got a lot of mean potential because he 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 ended up hanging himself from a tree didn't he tom yeah he did so uh, um so it, fame didn't make him happy fame and wealth didn't no, make him happy uh but and also with the 30 pieces of silver but also the truth of the matter is when it comes to sort of affairs of the heart judas is something of an enigma we don't know anything about his romantic history, do we? I mean, there's very, there's, oddly, the Bible is silent on um, <laughs> Judas' yeah. love life. So we just don't know how he's going to re interact with the others. How is he going to get on with Lola Montez? Will he be pals with Lord Byron? Or G I mean, Jimmy Carter, obviously, is yeah. going to have massive issues with Judas yeah. Yeah. from the, from oh, the, yeah. from the get-go. Yeah, yeah uh, he is. Because Jimmy he is. You know, will be horrified to see Judas pitch up. I mean, there is, of course, the, the, the plot twist that you get in Jesus Christ Superstar, where actually he, he's, he's betraying Jesus simply to try and get Jesus to you know, reveal himself as the Messiah. So that suggests a kind of a talent for tricksy behavior for kind of psychological yeah. play that doesn't always come off so that well, might be interesting he might I think the sort of judas marcia williams i could see them yeah if not coupling up then certainly they could play an interesting part stirring up the others against one another yeah and so on okay so anyway yeah um i'd be very i'm i'm, I'm particularly keen katie to see how judas gets on in this competition so do you think his motives might be more pure Maybe. Well, this is the enigma. I mean, this is, this is the fascination know. of it, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and that because, will be for the audience to decide. I mean, a man who's already sold himself for 30 pieces of silver, 50 grand is a hell of a lot of money to Judas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Will, I think, what will he do for 50 grand? I think on, the, on that cliffhanger, we should take a break. Um, and when we come back, we'll look at the other five contenders. Welcome back to Love Island. The tension is mounting. The excitement is at fever pitch. Uh, we're joined by top Love Island uh, connoisseur, enthusiast, meme generator, and all-round expert, Katie Holland, um, who is, of course, the daughter of top uh, TV historian and Spider-Man Tom Holland. And um, Katie, we've done six of the Love Island contestants, haven't we? We've, we've got, had yeah. some pretty big names, unexpected names. Byron, President Carter... Judas, Francis Stewart, <laughs> Marcia Williams, uh, and that's it, isn't it? And Lola, no, Lola Montez. Montez. Lola Montez. And, and Tom, Tom, you're you're due to nominate your next. Yeah, so I'm going to give for a man this time. I'm going to give for a lad, and and this one is the lad of lads. So this is the funny one, the top lad who loves the lads, leader of the lads, uh, and I've gone for General George Armstrong Custer, who uh, yes. great 19th century general, 1839 to 76. Um, Great general, chiefly famous for having led the Seventh Cavalry uh, into the largest concentration of Native Americans <laughs> gathered in the nineteenth century and being wiped out. Yeah, you say he's a great general, Tom. He's a terrible general. But the thing about the thing about the Battle of Little Bighorn is that it, it gave it gave those it gave the Sioux and their allies probably the, the single best moment of the nineteenth century. Um, and I think that's what Custer was all about. He was about giving people a great time. Um, people adored him. He was nothing but trouble, but people completely adored him. So he was married. He, he was married to Libby. And um, she wrote about Custer that my husband used to tell me that, that he believed he was the happiest man on earth. And I cannot help thinking that he was. Everything he did, he loved. He loved being in the cavalry. He loved having fun. Um, Sitting Bull, who was in command of the uh, um, of, of the Native American forces at the Battle of Little Bighorn, said that he'd been told that when Custer died, he killed a man as he died, and then he laughed. So his very last thing was to kill someone and then laugh, which basically sums Custer up. And the whole course of his career was a kind of constant succession of scrapes, jams, 
and, and then people adored him so much that they would let him get out. So he was at West Point. He came bottom at West Point. He was he he got kind of court martialed because he was supposed to be on sentry duty, and he went off and got on a kind of lads piss up in the the local town. But everyone liked him so much that they let him off. Then the Civil War happened, and he was absolutely brilliant in the Civil War. He had these kind of golden ringlets. He loads of cavalry dash. He charged around, and again, everybody adored him. At the end of the Civil War, he was the youngest general ever in the in the U.S. Army, and from that point on, he got he went out to the the Great Plains, um, and he just gallivanted around. Uh, people, you know, his superiors would say, "Go and do this." He'd go off. He'd. He, he he traveled everywhere with a, a team of Irish wolfhounds. And so if he kind of saw a deer or a buffalo, he'd go charging off after them and completely leave, <laughs> leave his troops stranded. Um, and there was one occasion where um, a whole load of uh, soldiers w- went out to find him, got ambushed by Native Americans. They had their eyeballs taken out and put on rocks. Oh, they had their testicles cut off and put in their mouths. Custer was told about this, and instead of feeling guilty about it, he went, how exciting for them. <laughs> that must have been so exciting for them to be stalked and killed. What a thrill. And so that was basic, that's basically what he is. Everything is a laugh. It's a thrill. It's excitement. And, and people cannot help but forgiving him for all the kind of terrible scrapes that he gets into. Tom, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to try and torpedo Custer's chances because I know you want him to do well. But I'm not right in thinking that by the time of Little Bighorn, A, he's a busted flush. B, he's starting to lose his hair, I think, which is surely a, a Love Island problem. Yeah. I mean, isn't there a counter argument that he's actually a terrible general? Yeah, he's a terrible general. I, 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 when I said great, I mean great in the kind of Love Island sense that he looks like a general. Okay. So not it, if he's it, losing his hair, not if the ringlets yeah, are but, but, to but, fit in. Yeah, but he's entering it at the stage where, in the words of one at Myra, um, he is as beautiful as Absalom with his yellow curls. Okay, well. So he's he's a lad. Yeah, he does sound a lad. He's How do you think he do, how do you think he do, Katie? Well, I feel like the fact that he's not a great general doesn't really matter because they mention their jobs in the first week and then it doesn't yeah. really Yeah. I mean, come he's up. not there to fight. He's not there to fight the Sioux, is he? Well, also I feel like he'd bring it into the games. He'd use like, you know, general um imagery to rally the troops, rally his lads. Um yeah. I think he'd do really yeah. well. Ooh, um golly. I mean, he'd yeah. love all the games. He'd love, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd endlessly be playing pranks. He'd be stealing people's speedos and all that. You know, it'd just be nonstop bands. I feel like he'd he'd put on the lady's fake tan just to see how it suited his golden locks. He would. Like Do you know what he'd be? He'd be yeah. general banter. He would. He really would. <laughs> I love him already. All right. Okay. Well, I've got so my other female contestant who deep down I think should win. Okay. See, I'm not going to put the pressure on you. Um, <laughs> I think she should win. She's born in 500, about 500 AD, maybe from Syria. Maybe she's from Cyprus. She's the daughter of a dancer and an actress, and her name is Theodora. And she rises from humble beginnings to become Empress of Rome. Now, the thing about Theodora, so she ends up marrying the Emperor Justinian, um, and Justinian and Theodora are probably the single most famous couple to have been uh to have ruled the eastern roman empire so that's the successor state well it's not the successor state; it's the continuation of the roman empire in the east byzantium as it's called they're one of the two or three most famous imperial couples of all time um theodore is a formidable character so when the the these riots in constantinople after the chariot racing the so-called nica riots when people are shouting nica nica sort of victory victory and smashing everything up and rampaging through Constantinople and the emperor is considering fleeing. It's Theodora who famously stiffens his resolve by saying the purple, the imperial purple cloak makes the best kind of funeral shroud. In other words, I'd rather die an empress than live as a commoner. And they stand, uh, they, they stay and they kill everybody and, and survive. Um, but the thing about Theodora is Theodora herself had been an actress and a dancer before she became empress. So that scandalized the kind of old elite at the court. And she is the subject of one of the raciest and most incendiary biographies ever written, The Secret History, by a man called Procopius, who had been a courtier and had sort of fallen out with the imperial couple. And he fills it with this sort of, frankly, quite pornographic stuff about Theodora's past. So he says, before he says, before she was empress, her venal charms were abandoned to a promiscuous crowd of citizens and strangers of every night and of every position. 
The fortunate lover who had been promised a night of enjoyment was often driven from her bed by a stronger or well or more wealthy favourite, which is very Love Island. Procopius says, often when she was alone with other actors, she would undress in their midst and arch her and arch her back provocatively, advertising like a peacock both to those who had had experience of her and to those who had not yet had that privilege, her trained suppleness, which I think is also very Love Island yeah, behaviour. that is. Often she would go picnicking with 10 young men or more in the flower of their strength and virility and dallied with them all the whole night through. And when they wearied of the sport, she would approach their servants, perhaps 30 in number, and engage with each of these. And even thus she found no allayment of her craving. And though, now I apologize to some listeners for this, uh, although she flung wide three gates to the ambassadors of Cupid, she lamented that nature had not similarly unlocked the straits of her bosom so that she might there have contrived a further welcome to his emissaries. So there's a lot of stuff like this. And there's also some carry on with geese, isn't there, Tom? Or swans? There is. There is uh, so so there, aren't any, there aren't any geese in the, I suppose there could be, couldn't there, on it was my pleasure island, so I can pleasure island. So you could have them. Okay, so, so 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 she did she did stuff with geese. I don't think would make it onto primetime TV. Yeah, but did she? Or was that a rumor? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Well, that's, that's the nature of this is the nature of that's the question of, of and, reality and Dominic, TV in the and, age and, of social media, isn't it? We don't know what's true and what's not. And yeah. and also fair to point out that she does end up becoming a saint. So yeah. it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, which which side of her character she brings out, the, 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 the side that does things yeah, with geese or <laughs> the side that just spends the whole time in church praying. Because she's very religious, isn't she, Tom? She ends up very I mean, religious, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I think there's a lot going on with her. And frankly, Katie, I'll be astounded if she doesn't win. I'll be, I'll be shocked. I do think she's the most interesting one. She kind of reminds me of Molly May in season, <laughs> season five. <laughs> does she? Did, did Molly, <laughs> was she friends with geese? Well, I don't know. There's just quite a lot to... Because I think the actress background is quite interesting. Yeah, um, the arching the so, back, all that stuff. I mean, well, on, so that's... so Molly May was an influencer before she joined Love Island, and so I think people had a perception of her that she was in it to win. Right. That she was good at playing up to the cameras. So maybe that would be Theodora's criticism on Twitter. I think she would. Yes, some people might. Well, obviously, yeah. the Procopius took a great dislike to her, and. Yeah. Um, I was sort basically just making making it up, I think. I think sort of Guardian readers will take against her because Procopius yeah. would have been a Guardian reading, wouldn't yeah. he, Tom? No, he's a Daily Mail. He's just making no, stuff Pro up. No, Procopius is... Like no, he's making stuff elite. up for the... No, 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 no. He's, he's tabloid. Tabloid. It's at pure tabloid press. I think that's, just, that's fake news. Right. That's, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I've also got an, a, a, an ancient member of royalty. Uh, so I'm going for... Uh, it's another woman, justifiably angry, jilted one. Almost always a woman will pull her ex for a chat and berate him in front of everyone. He won't care. <laughs> so I have gone for Olympias, uh, nice. fourth century queen from Epirus, who uh, ended up marrying Philip of Macedon and is the mother of Alexander the Great. Uh, and she had a tempestuous relationship with Philip, who was not a good boy, um, was constantly cheating on her. Um, and Olympias was, was a, a terrifyingly, um, angry person, very, very formidable person. You wouldn't really want to annoy her, but Philip did. Um, and so there are all kinds of rumors that in the end, she ended up uh, having him assassinated, which would be a kind of extreme way to win Love Island. But I think Olympias, you know, if that's what she decided it took, she'd do it. Um, and other, I, I, her other party trick, and again, perhaps this is something that would enable her to go directly in, in, um, uh, up against Theodora is that she's supposed to have uh, gone to bed with giant snakes. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know how that would go down with, with, with the watching fans, but, um, <laughs> so she, she would offer fans, um, snakes and an ability to eliminate anyone who annoyed her. Which was her reputation that she was a spurned woman and she never got got him back really in the end yeah well he had multiple she, he had multiple wives didn't he he was he, yeah he was endlessly marrying um uh, mm. uh, uh other queens and also he he played the the dirty trick so so um olympias was the the sister of the king of epirus and so she could always rely on him 
but Philip kind of stabbed her in the back by sending off their daughter to to, to marry him. So it was all very incestuous and devious and treacherous. So, so did um, he have the last laugh? Really? No, because he ended no, up dead, and, dead. and and she uh, she she survived him. So I offer I offer you Olympias. Yeah, I think she's she's um, controversial, she might, isn't she? Yeah, I think she might pull people's backs up the wrong way. The snake stuff is a problem, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think she's going to do that well. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, no, fine. Have we just got one left. One left, yeah. So I, I, I'm in this to win this. Actually, I want to see my contestants win. I can tell. Um, <laughs> So there's one category left, which is producer's favourite. Always very likeable and unproblematic. Um, and so I thought I'd go for somebody very monogamous, uxorious, who pairs up quickly and then sticks by their partner for the rest of the competition. Somebody who a lot of rest is history fat audience, you know, who, who they'll already like because they know him as a great man of history. And trust him. And, and, and they trust him. Yeah, they trust him. And he's, of course, former Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Stanley Baldwin, Katie, as I'm sure you know, you don't need me to tell you because I, I know Stanley Baldwin's name will trip off your tongue. Um, Stanley Baldwin was three times prime minister in the 1920s and 1930s. Criminally forgotten now, it pains me to say. Uh, a man of the Midlands. Um, he's very, he appears very stolid, kind of paternalistic, conservative. Um, he gave a tenth of his fortune to pay off the national debt anonymously at the end of the First World War. So oh. he's incredibly kind, man, Katie. And I think that will count for a lot with the fans. Um, I think what will also count with the fans is he's not boring. So he's not Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter has committed lust in his heart, as we know. Stanley was almost kicked out of Harrow as a boy for writing his own pornography. And then I'd forgotten this, that when he then went on to Cambridge, where he got third, um, his time at Trinity College Cambridge was blighted <laughs> by the fact that when he went to Cambridge... Um, as soon as he arrived at Trinity, they said, oh, we've got a new master of the college. And to his horror, the new master of the college was the headmaster of Harrow. Oh, no. had, oh that's who awful. Had, who had never forgiven him for writing this porn. And basically, <laughs> and basically was always glaring at him or giving him, you know, muttering under his breath as he passed Baldwin. So that was, that was a problem for Baldwin. Um, but one more thing about Baldwin, which I think will endear him to the fans, is Baldwin... And his wife, Lucy, had, I think, six children, like I remember. But one of them, Oliver, who also became an MP, became an MP for the Labour Party and was gay and lived with his friend Johnny, his partner, all his days. And Stanley, defying the conventions of the times, um, was absolutely fine with this, would write letters to them as a couple, have them over for dinner, yeah. all this kind of thing. Very, very progressive, good behaviour. Now, on top of that, now we need to talk about his his love life. So this is this will definitely be, I think this actually will tempt Tom away from some of Tom's own contenders. Stanley met his wife, Lucy. Lucy, when you look at pictures of her, is not a natural Love Island contestant. I think it's fair to say she's quite a large woman, but she's photographed <laughs> in later life. So let's let's, you know, give her the benefit of the doubt. But he met Lucy and, and he was as a young man. And what literally bowled him over was that when he first laid eyes upon her, she was bowling in a cricket match. Wow. Because she oh. was a very, very keen cricketer. She That's played for the White sweet. Heather Club, which is, I think, the first women's, or one of the first women's cricket clubs. She was an excellent batsman or batswoman. Uh, her average, Tom, do you know what her average was? Yeah. I'm asking you to guess. Oh, uh, 36. No, her batting average was 62. Wow. Higher at the time than the top professional men's player. So she was an absolutely first-class cricketer. Do you know, she, she will bowl over the fans, Dominic. <laughs> Stanley Baldwin was <laughs> immensely impressed by her. He would take the train to go and watch her play cricket. And then when he would take the train home, home again, on the way home, he would get off Katie at every stop to send her a telegram saying how much oh. he was missing her. Okay, so yeah. Stanley yeah. Baldwin, I think, I mean, he's not in this for the money because he's giving well, his money away. He's in this for love. But he yeah. didn't adequately prepare us for the Second World War. So there is that. That is a minor. No. So that is, a, <laughs> that is, that there is, is more that. fake news. There and... is that. So that, that is perhaps a problem. <laughs> but he, but I feel we'll like you're just what... jealous because Dominic's choices are so... <laughs> no, no, I, I'm not in it to win. I'm, in, I, I'm, I'm not in it to win. I'm in it to provide the fans I with the best know. show. That's, that's the thing. So, so just before we, you choose who couples up with who, we just need to run through who looks good in uh, 
skimpy swimwear because that's that's key, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so who we got? We so we got um, Lord Byron. Byron will look good. Yeah, General Custer. General Custer would look good. Jimmy um, Carter, not good. Jimmy Carter, probably not not good. He's a bit a bit scrawny. scrawny. Yeah, a bit scrawny. Uh, Stanley Baldwin, Terror, he wouldn't look good. I mean, he looks good in a tweed suit and a hat, but he's not <laughs> going to look good in speedos, is he? I mean, even you would admit that, Dominic. I would. I would admit that, Dominic. And who was the fifth man? I can't remember. Judas. Oh, Judas. <laughs> Judas. Judas. <laughs> Judas. <laughs> I mean, I, I have, I have no idea. But he'd probably look quite good. Well, that's. <laughs> I mean, he's been roaming around Galilee for three years, so he's probably quite. He'd be quite fit, tanned. Like yeah. <laughs> he'd be tanned, tanned. I think he'd look good. I think he'd look good. So, uh, and then the girls, uh, Leila Montez would obviously look sensational. Uh, Theodora would look sensational. Francis Stewart would look sensational. Olympias would probably look frightening. I just think there'd be something about her that would be, she'd probably have lots of menacing tattoos. And then I can't remember who the fifth one was. Uh, Marcia Williams, Lady Fulton. Oh, <laughs> what would she look like in? <laughs> what, what, what would she look like twerking? <laughs> I can't even speak. I'm laughing so much, but also I've completely lost my voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think Marcia Williams probably is in the Stanley Baldwin category when it comes to the swimmer. Okay. I don't think it's okay. a strong suit. My favourite. Okay. okay so katie dad can you can you pair up those those 10 contenders so this is sort of week one is it quite hard that's, um that's the fun of it isn't it okay so i think i do okay so i think instinctively byron and olympias would pair up <laughs> so right. I, mean, yeah. I think yeah. she'd i think she'd like she'd want him because he wants everyone else yeah and, and he would be awful for her he'd be awful and I, so I think the producers would would make them get together through through games or excellent pairing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm glad you thought that was an excellent pairing because I, I wasn't really sure. Um, no, you're the arbiter. You choose. You okay. Choose. I think Theodora and Stanley Baldwin. The- oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's my dream couple. <laughs> I mean, this... I'd like to have them over for dinner. <laughs> Dominic, I, I cannot. I mean, that is so completely your dream pairing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Theodora and Stanley Baldwin. <laughs> Stanley Baldwin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so that's the second. Do you couple. need to say why, or can I just just give you the pairing? Yeah, no, yeah. So what, so what? That's as obvious. I mean, well, no. yeah, but but why, why do you think? Well, why, why is it why Dominic's would... dream pa- dream pairing? Because Stanley Baldwin's his hero and Theodora is his um, heroine. Oh, I did it for he's you. Got, <laughs> he's always loved them. But, why, but Katie, well, why do you think that Stanley Baldwin and Theodora would make a natural couple? Because <laughs> um, I think um, they both have quite cheeky sides to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's a good reason. That's a good reason. They're quite good at. They're not. They're they're, they're pretty good people. At monogamy, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. Heart, heart think, of gold. Heart of gold. Yeah. And I think Theodora would be. You know, Sandy Baldwin's a leader. She's. Yeah. She's good at helping a, a leader. I think people at first wouldn't trust her. That they would think she was just with him because everyone likes him, and that it's a clear way to the money. You know, yeah. she's a shrewd, a shrewd, intelligent, and and so rather than married to someone who spends all her time playing cricket. Maybe if he's matched up with someone who could say, you know, rearm. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say. Yeah. You're looking yeah. at a very different story of the origins of the Second World War with Theodora. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, think, I think Theodora and Stanley would be quite sweet together, actually. Okay, um, good. Uh, okay. <laughs> Marty Williams, I just, I just don't know what to do with her. Um, yeah. Okay, I feel like... I feel like Lola Montez and General Custer would have a good time. Yeah, I think they'd. Th- th- yeah, they'd be definitely would. I can't believe yeah. I'm taking this sufficiently seriously that I'm. I'm diligently noting down what you're saying. Okay, so that's. Uh, I think I agree. They they completely go together. They are gin and tonic. Uh, fourth couple. Okay, my fourth couple are Marcy Williams and Judas. Yes. Marcy Williams and Judas. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That. I mean, that would be a toxic pairing, wouldn't it? Well, if she's tapping a handbag and threatening to ring the Daily Mail about him, <laughs> but I think because I think she'd be, but I think she'd be intrigued by his motives, and she'd she would, say, yeah. maybe we would be a good power couple. I feel like they'd match in yeah, each other. Yeah, let's join up and make sweet treachery. <laughs> right? 
Yes. And I think yeah. they tried to sabotage everyone else. <laughs> they would, yeah. <laughs> so that they could win. But I'm not sure they'd make it to the fight well. No, I no, guess no. it's for the fans to say, isn't it? But Well, it's no for you. It's for you to say, actually. Um, mm. And then I finally I put um, Jimmy Carter and Francis Stewart. Yeah, yeah, I could see that um. working. <laughs> but they're both sweet people. But Jimmy Carter's done very well for himself there, I think. Unaccountably well. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think he'd be completely obsessed with her, but would be panicking in the. I think I think that, I think that's a very very s- sweet pairing, right? But, right, but, but somebody has to go, right? They they do, but Dominic and Katie back me up here. Um, part of the the, the complication is that you then thro- you bring new people into the mix, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's also part of it. They're parachuted in. So Dominic, what I thought we should do is that we should uh, before Katie decide who gets. Uh, gets thrown off because we're, ha- we're going to have four couples <laughs> that go up to the public vote so one of these one of these four, five couples needs to go okay before we do that let's introduce three lads and three babes right. in their in their their tight speedos and their bikinis <laughs> to see whether katie thinks that any of these might be successful in in kind of worming their way in i've chosen three lads you've chosen three babes i'm gutted that you've incriminated me in this but go on yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> okay so the three lads that i've chosen and all of these are, are friends of the show so regular listeners to this podcast will will probably know who they are okay so the first the first person i'm introducing well actually they're a pair of lads they're they're good old they're, they're friends the first one is dietrich von hilsen hazler who <laughs> katie is the chief of the um german general staff but is chiefly known for the way that he died. Uh, so he was in a hunting lodge with the Kaiser and a whole and all the top general German generals. Um, the Kaiser's feeling a bit down. <laughs> Dietrich von Hülsen Hazler goes out I of the goes out of the room in mid supper <laughs> and suddenly bursts back in dressed in a tutu. Pirouettes, does dance of the sugar plum fairy, and then kills over dead. Now, do, do you think that this would be a party trick that would appeal? <laughs> To any of any um, of the any of the girls in <laughs> that we've got there, I think oh, because that it's reminds me ma- very much of a moment in 2019. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, what happened? Tell us. Well, tell all. So, um, there's a dancing challenge um, where you have to try and get the your partner's heart rate up. <laughs> well, and it, goodness, and it reminds me of Curtis a bit. Um, so there's a couple of dancers in the mix. I mean, experienced maybe, dancers. Yeah, Theodora, Lola Montez. Maybe Lola Montez. You think she'd ditch General Custer for for Dietrich Graf von Hülsen Hazler? Well, I'm not sure. I don't listen. think she would. I don't think. She okay, would. well, listen, Katie. To the, the, the two other lads who come in. The next one is is Dietrich von Hülsen Hazler's friend, the Kaiser. Oh gosh. But disaster because he's come in in his tight speedos, looking good. But he's wearing deck shoes. He's oh, wearing oh, deck shoes. <laughs> They're the wrong shoes. He's got the wrong end of the stick. Oh no! But would would the fact he's wearing deck shoes exactly? I mean, the wrong footwear. I don't what know how would, that would play. What would Olympias or Marcia? Williams okay, and the third the third friend of the show who's coming in is uh, is General Gordon, uh, yeah. Chinese Gordon, great imperial hero in China, uh, in Khartoum, ends up dying there. But he's possibly not the ideal not the <laughs> ideal person to go on. Love Island, because it was said of him that the presence of ladies, especially of fashionable ladies, filled him with uneasiness. <laughs> um, and on, on one occasion, he, he went to the ballet in Naples, sat there for about five minutes, was so appalled by, uh, by the spectacle of what the ballerinas were wearing that he stormed out crying, you call that civilization? <laughs> so I, I don't know whether you think any of those would, would really... I mean, there's no obligation. I think they're all really good. I think they're really good choices, but I don't think. I think General Gordon would have the same luck as Jimmy Carter, really. Yeah, right. I think they'd make him go on loads of dates, and he'd, he'd find it horrible. He'd hate mm. it. He'd really hate he'd it. Hate yeah. it. Well, some people walk out, don't they? Don't some people walk? Yeah, someone walked out last week actually because he thought this isn't for me. I, I see General Gordon as somebody who would walk out quite quickly. I, yeah, I would agree with that, Dominic. Uh, yeah, I think he would walk out very quickly. So, so probably none of them then. That's disappointing. Well, I don't think deck fans. shoes are enough to, to get you booted off the island, but um, okay. I don't think instinctively, opinion. I don't think that I, none of these people are speaking to me as his soulmate. Okay. Okay. No, fine. Okay. okay. So, so, um, so Dominic, the, uh, the three, the three girls. So the three ladies. So I think it's fair to say, isn't it, Katie, that Love Island is a, is a, is a story like all reality TV shows of heroes and villains and the producers like to create villains. Yeah. So I thought I'd bring on one of history's great undisputed villains. 
and that is the right of Virginia Woolf. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Mrs. Woolf enters the house. I mean, people will know her. Uh, modernist writer, author of Mrs. Dalloway, To the Lighthouse, and so on. Um, also a towering world-class snob. <laughs> um, who's always writing in her diary about how she hates her servants and wishes they're all dead and they're horribly fat and common and all this sort of thing. Well, she um, wouldn't have to worry about fat people, would she? No, that's not going to be a problem. But the, the issue of, I mean, Theodora is, is from the sort of wrong side of the tracks. Lola Montez. Um, Virginia Woolf, I, I, personally, I see her trying to form an alliance early on with Marcia Williams. They both have a sort of equine look. Yes. Um, <laughs> so they might bond. they might bond over that. Would to I mean, Katie, the decision is yours. I know. I think Virginia Woolf would get on quite well with Judas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dominic! But you may disagree. I mean, she hated Stanley Baldwin. By the way, there was bad blood there because Stanley Baldwin, Ooh. you know, represents everything that Mrs. Woolf despises in the politics of the 1920s. So the yeah. producers so when, know that, of course. Of so course that's almost so like she, bringing on an ex or something. So when she enters the show... When you've got show, bad blood before, yeah. I think the cameras are on Stanley Baldwin's face. Yeah. He's rolling his it's eyes. Like, oh and, my God, it's Virginia. Okay, who else, Dominic? Um, so Virginia Woolf, um, my next one... Uh, I have to say Tom Tom was slightly instrumental in some of these choices. The next one <laughs> is another is another great fan favourite, though some people might say another villainess, somebody who's going to have a little bit of an issue possibly with Marcia Williams, and that's um, the late Baroness Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Mrs Thatcher, now she's an interesting one because, A, she loves dancing. She's well up for the dancing challenges because when she visited the White House in, I think, 1981, Dennis and the ambassador and so on had to basically prize her away from receptions because she wanted to keep dancing into the small hours. And actually when they got to New York at the end of the trip, she again said at the end of one evening, I'd love to now go dancing. And but, they were like, no, no, prime minister, you can't go dancing. So that's an issue. So, But she wouldn't like sitting around by a swimming pool, would she? No, because she hated holidays. This is a problem. She was always trying to work. <laughs> She would undoubtedly bring work with her. <laughs> I worry that she would argue with Marcia Williams a lot about inflation or something. I mean, she hated, she didn't get on with Jimmy Carter. So again. Oh, I was about to say maybe that could be a. He was tea's a teetotaler. She likes a drink of an evening. She went to the White House and had a terrible time when he was the host. But they're both quite exorious, aren't they? So Well, they are. They are. Um... Although she had an eye for kind of raffish, slightly sleazy lounge lizard men. Maybe Byron. She loves that. She would She'd like. love Byron. She she hated Jimmy Carter because he's boring. She'd love Byron. She'd love Custer. I actually think deep down she would have a slight soft spot for Judas. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> no, she's afraid that she'd devout. But methodism. the Methodism, the Methodism is an issue there. <laughs> no, I, I think, think so. I well, think v Virginia Woolf. I don't think is strong enough to tear apart Marcy Williams and, and Judas for me. Oh, really? Okay. And what about your third choice, Dominic? Yeah. Well, what Kate is thinking about the, Mrs. Thatcher, the third choice. Um, a real favourite of Tom's this, and I have to say he put me up to this. Yeah, I did. It's um, It appears to be um, the, the late Empress Poppea, wife of the Emperor Nero. Ooh. But it must become quite quickly apparent, Tom, if it's this whole swimwear stuff and all this business, that actually this is Nero's... It's a slave, isn't he? Uh, he's a freedman. He's a freed, a freed boy. Freed boy. A freed boy called Sporus, who Nero has had castrated to make him look like Poppea. Which I think is something perhaps that the, the Love Island production hasn't yet investigated. So we're ahead of they the curve. They definitely haven't, there. no. So they haven't yeah. introduced a eunuch. So this is very progressive. I mean, there's, there's probably going to be complaints on social media about Love Island going woke with this. <laughs> I know exactly um, what would happen to Sporus, actually. That's the one I do know. What's going to happen? I think Sporus and Byron will get together. So what happens to Olympias? Leaving Olympias jilted and booted off the island. Because if you're single, you can't survive. Olympias booted off the island. But hold on. At this point, at the point that Sporus jumps into bed with Byron. Yeah. I mean, she, in desperation, isn't she going to try and make a move on Judas or something? Or on Margaret Thatcher? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, we we need to get we need to decide who our couples are, Katie. So you need to decide. So are you are you booting Olympias off and uh, Byron is, is pairing up with Sporus? Yeah, yeah, that's what I know. Interjection. Surely Olympias would make a move on Jimmy Carter rather than Francis Stewart. And and poor Francis Stewart is so dumb that she'd be powerless. She'd wake up and find three enormous snakes in her bed, and it would never cross her mind that someone was out to get her because she'd be too dumb. Do you think Olympias would have things to talk about with Jimmy Carter? 
<laughs> yeah, I th- Olympias is a, is a woman with a, a, a hard headed understanding of power. So I think that she would she'd be able to help Jimmy Carter with the energy crisis with, and certainly she'd be able to help him with his running. She give him. Oh, I like hits. that. I like that. Okay. So um, Byron and Sporus. Byron, Byron and, and Sporus. Sporus, and then let's go for Olympias and, and Jimmy Carter, and then let's get rid of Francis Stewart. And the rest are all as is. Yeah. Stanley Baldwin and Theodora. Judas is still with uh, with Marcia. Yeah, I feel quite strongly about that. Wow. Okay. And then Custer and uh, Lola. Yeah. Okay, so Katie, so the, so the five historical Love Island 2022 contestants are Lord Byron and Sporus, Jimmy Carter and Olympias, Stanley Baldwin and Theodora, <laughs> Judas and Marcia Falkander, General Custer and Lola Montez. Now, only four can go forward to the public vote. Which of those five couples are you going to evict? I think... It might have to be Judas and, Mar- and Marcy Williams. Wow, that is okay. a bombshell for Judas. That, that is a bombshell. He's gone back. To, he just can't win, can he? I mean, <laughs> I just don't think people. Are, I, I think mean, people don't trust them. He was in it for the money, and now nothing. And now nothing. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. it was a bit transparent. Maybe his motives. So okay. the public didn't like it. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's the result. We will put this up to vote on Twitter. Byron and Sporus, Carter and Olympias. Baldwin and Theodora, Custer and Montez. Amazing. But there can be only one victor, only one winning couple, and it is up to you, the public, to decide. And so we will announce the result in a special bonus episode that we will put out in, what, a day after tomorrow. Uh, And we will go over the entrails, have a look, analyse the drama, uh, and crown our 2022 Historical Love Island champions. Thanks very much for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.